Hi, I'm Fred Coe, and this is a brief video to summarize just the high points about calcium phosphate stones. The, the cut point for being a phosphate stone former is that your calcium stone is over 50% calcium phosphate. That can be either bone mineral hydroxyapatite or it can contain brushite. In the former case, we simply call you a calcium phosphate stone former. In the second case, we call you a brushite stone former. The reason for the distinction is brushite stones cause more kidney damage and they're more difficult to manage. So there's really calcium oxalate stones, that means less than half phosphate, Brushite stones, that means any brushite. Routine calcium phosphate stones, that means more than 50% of the stone is hydroxyapatite or bone mineral. Now basically, that's not the most important thing. Most important thing is when the stones become very rich in phosphate, then you're gonna behave more and more like a phosphate stone former. What matters about phosphate stone formers, that's why I'm kind of moving up and down here. When you make more phosphate in stones, you plug your kidney tubules with crystals. You damage your kidney tissue. You get nephrocalcinosis, that means starry sky. Kidney lights up with crystals on the CT. It means that the stones will grow faster and the stones will grow bigger on the whole and it means it's harder to treat. That's why it's so important. I'm not gonna show you all these detailed graphs. You can look at the whole article or you can listen to the long video. What I wanna to get to mainly is, first of all, there's a link between more shockwave treatments, this number of shockwave treatments per patient, and the percent of calcium phosphate in stones. This is in our clinic experience. Down here would be calcium oxalate stone formers. Up here, you're talking about phosphate stone former. More or less trypsies, more likely to be a phosphate stone former. Here is an important graph. It shows the percent of phosphate in, in the market basket of stones for a large number of people versus two things. The supersaturation with respect to calcium phosphate, that's your cap supersaturation on every lab report, and the percent of phosphate. This is for women and for men. As the one goes up, more and more cap, the supersaturation goes up. That makes sense, right? It's pH that's doing it. This is the urine pH. Almost completely calcium oxalate, near 5.9, almost completely calcium phosphate, 6.2 to 6.3. Four tenths of a pH unit makes all the difference. You're in calcium somewhat higher in the capstone formers. This is from genetic hypercalcuria. Now, I just told you, and I'm not gonna repeat it, and I'm not gonna detail it. The capstone formers, they tend to deposit mineral in their kidney tubules. The routine calsox patients don't. These people do. And they have damage. This is injury in the medulla where the stones form and in the cortex of the kidney where the glomerular eye. So it's not good to form phosphate stones. They form when the urine pH and calcium are both high and the pH is what makes it phosphate. Now, one reason for a high urine pH is being young and being female. This is urine pH over the life, over a very long period, spanning the human life, the adult period. Women, men, this is from a very large database. Younger have a higher pH. Uh, women, particularly higher than men. That's why there's more phosphate stones in women. The pH gradually falls with age, and the phosphate stones tend to give way to calcium oxalate 
and finally to uric acid. People make a high urine pH to some extent because their kidneys excrete too much of the acid load from their food and from their bodies in the form of ammonia. This is the urine ammonia. See how high it is in female calcium phosphate and brushite stone formers, calcium oxalate stone formers even, compared to normals. And look here among the men, it's extraordinary. You might say, what is all this? Is that the kidney can get rid of acid by making the urine more acidic and titrating phosphate, or it can make more ammonia. Why these patients make more ammonia is not known. That they make more ammonia came from this study, which is from our lab and it's only a year old. There's less urine citrate in the phosphate stone formers, here compared to normal, here compared to normal. The reason for it is that the kidney cells take the citrate up, it's been filtered into the tubules, and metabolize it. The same cells that make too much ammonia take up the citrate, the cells of the proximal tubule. So there's something wrong with the proximal tubule. Now with that brief introduction, you might say, what do I do about it? That's why I made this short video. You're stuck with a high pH. You could be a woman, you could be younger, you could make more ammonia, whatever the reasons. You can't change it. Uh, no doctor can lower it. So you have to work around it which means the treatment of the calcium phosphate stone former relies on only part of what's ordinarily available. So for fluids, where we normally like to get above two liters, it's wise to get higher, like two and a half liters. For dropping the urine calcium, which is pretty high in this kind of patient, you want to drop the sodium as much as you can below the U.S. tolerable upper limit, even lower to the U.S. ideal of 1,500 milligram a day. You want to give up your love of sugar, as I did once. Uh, the U.S. guidelines call for it, and sugar causes spikes of high urine calcium. In, in my opinion, if you're making phosphate stones, Thiazide should come sooner than later. And here's how I think about it. If cutting out the sugar and cutting out the salt and drinking the water does not get your cap supersaturation below one, in other words, get rid of calcium phosphate supersaturation, I would add thiazide. I wouldn't wait too long because the stones can grow rapidly and they can get large. Potassium citrate may not be ideal. It will raise the urine pH. It may raise the citrate. It may lower the urine calcium a little bit, but it will definitely raise the pH. If you do wish to use potassium citrate, or your doctor does, keep your eye on the cap supersaturation. Is it down below one? Did the potassium citrate raise it? by any chance. I would tend to be leery of this treatment for that special kind of stone. As for the oxalate lists, which all stone formers seem to focus on, it's not the main problem here. Certainly if it's high, you want to do what you can about diet oxalate. But your main concern is calcium phosphate supersaturation below one. I wrote a whole article on that supersaturation. It was the article on brushite supersaturation. They're one and the same. When you see it on your lab report, keep your eyes on it. If you're a phosphate stone former, be sure it's below one. Aim there. This was the short video. It didn't cover most of the details. There's a longer one that does. 
If this was enough for you, it was nice to talk with you. I'm Fred Coe. Bye-bye.